Recently, I had a conversation with a flat earth in the comments section of my video regarding magnetic fields, ferromagnetism, and the Curie temperature. He started off with some silly stuff about my needing to provide proof for some assertions, which I didn't even make. Uh, but after a while, he clearly got bored of that and decided to move on to claiming that classical mechanics disproves the Earth being a spinning ball. Now, it started off with some pretty ham-fisted arguments where he conflated acceleration and work along with a series of other things, but once I got him to refine his statement a bit, it became interesting. Now, I will try to present his argument as well as I can and then pick it apart to see what is going on, and it is as follows. Kinetic energy is proportional to the square of the velocity of an object, and as a result, the amount of work required to accelerate the body by a fixed amount depends on the velocity of the object prior to acceleration. Let's take a mass of 1 kilogram, for example. If it is travelling at 10 meters per second, it has 50 joules of kinetic energy, and we accelerate it by 10 meters per second per second for one second, so its velocity becomes 20 meters per second, and it has a kinetic energy then of 200 joules, and the work done is then therefore 150 joules. Now we accelerate it again by 10 meters per second per second for one second, so its final velocity becomes 30 meters per second, and it has a kinetic energy of 450 joules. This means that this time the work done is 250 joules, which is 100 joules larger than before. Now this is cool, there's absolutely no problem with this. This is well known, well established, and well accepted. But at this point I would like to point out that he disagrees with this statement, and that this is not what he is saying. Uh, I've asked him a few times and everything he has actually come out with so far sounds like it's a statement along these lines, or at least it's an equivalent statement. But it, this is probably because his communication skills aren't great or he doesn't actually understand the quantities that he is talking about. However, he then applies his reasoning to driving your car. Great. Now we are in a car, let's say, along the equator. When at rest, your car has a velocity of 460 meters per second due to the rotation of the Earth. So if you're accelerating with the Earth's rotation, then it would require more work than if you were accelerating against the Earth's rotation. Now we can measure the change in velocity and by extension the change in kinetic energy. And when we do, we see that the change in kinetic energy is the same regardless of the direction in which we set off. And he concludes that, therefore, the Earth is not rotating. Now we can see where he went wrong. He failed to take into account the appropriate reference frame. I wouldn't normally tackle something like this if it weren't phrased in terms of energy because now there is something interesting here. To demonstrate this point, we take a train travelling with some velocity vt, however we are on the train, so with respect to our reference frame, the train is at rest. Now while we are on the train, we accelerate an object uh, which weighs one kilogram, and it starts moving towards the front. Now in this process, its velocity changes such that it has some final velocity vf. Now the work done on an object is equal to the change in energy, and assuming that there's no change in potential energy, then we are only concerned with kinetic energy. In this case, the work done is then given by this expression. Now we could repeat the same thing, but then accelerate the object such that it moves towards the back, and the velocity becomes minus 10 meters per second, where the minus sign indicates that it is moving towards the back, or opposite to the direction of travel of the train. Now the same equations apply and we notice that the magnitude of the velocities are the same and therefore it doesn't matter if we accelerate the object to the front or to the back, the work done is the same. But now if we were to observe this from a reference frame in which the train is moving, let's say the platform, and we'll call this frame the primed frame, the velocities are the vector sum of the object's velocity with respect to the train and the train's velocity. So we find that the initial and final velocities are given by these expressions. So now our expression for work becomes this. And when we compare that for the work in the non-prime frame, we see something interesting, and that is that the work in the primed frame is not equal to the work in the non-primed frame. And this is interesting because this suggests that the amount of energy an object has is dependent on the reference frame. 
The flat earther in question somehow considers this impossible because the amount of energy must always be constant. And th after all, this is what the first law of thermodynamics tells us. But here we stumble on some interesting points. Now, the first is pretty straightforward. Physical laws like the first law of thermodynamics or the second, third and zeroth law have to hold within all reference frames, but not across reference frames. There are some quantities which are invariant when transforming between reference frames. Now, in Newtonian mechanics, these are mass, distance, and time, and they're quantities which are called invariant. However, momentum, and by extension velocity and kinetic energy, are not invariant. Of course, when we are talking about special or general relativity, it does get a little bit more complicated. But the really interesting thing happens when we think about what energy actually is. Now, a quick Google search will tell us that energy represents a quantity that describes an object's capacity to do work or something along those lines. But that just tells you what it means and that's what it represents, but not what it is. And then we arrive at something very simple. Energy is not real. But hold on, you pay money to your energy supplier to power the devices you use to watch YouTube videos, and in some cases the energy bills can actually get so high that you end up in crippling debt. So are you paying the energy companies real money for a fake product? Well, no, because... Just like that debt, energy is just an abstract concept, and it just exists to balance the books. Energy follows simple rules which are outlined by the laws of motion and thermodynamics, but just like banks keep track of money, physicists keep track of energy, and in both cases what the two keep track of is just an abstract concept. But there's one key difference. You could feasibly extricate yourself from society and live as a hermit without the need for money. But you can't escape the need for energy. And this is because physics is a bitch.